All right, so I'm gonna make a video on doing the direct drive conversion on the Sunlu S9. So your front view is gonna look like that, and this is the back of it. And this is what you're printing. So you go on to uh, colts3d.com. You'll find you'll find it here. Um, so the cables on it should be long enough to reach. I'll just see if they have any comments or anything on it. Um, no, not really. Anyway, I've already printed it, so it'll go in here, so we'll undo that, put that on there, put that on the back of there, remove this cable from over here, relocate the filament runout sensor in that, and put it all up on top of there. So first thing we're going to need to do, we're going to have to heat it up. And uh, get our get our filament out of here. I've found that a lot of these, the extruder function, it's not really all that great. You better to just heat it up, get it to temperature, pull that damn thing out. Just pull it out. Simplest way. So we'll do that. Then once we do that, then we'll start taking this stuff off of here and getting the stuff mounted up. So you want to get in here with a ratchet, hold your Allen wrench. And just uh, get these out, and then when you're done doing that, that bracket will go in its place. So when you remove it, these are the spacers. Be just careful, it'll fall into the print bed if you've got it up high. Alright, once you got that off, then you can fit this in here. And it's going to go like that. I'm leaving my tube in there because I can't get it out for some reason, and I'm just going to trim it. Okay, so when you get this far with it, you're going to be putting this in here. And also, you're going to want to cut a hole in the braid here and fish out these two. You'll have to undo them. You'll have to pull the cover, undo that, and then undo the stepper motor. Fish them through because we now need to run this over to here. And another thing, you need to take this off of here if you can't get this on with a spring. So that's the easiest way to probably do that. So the other thing we had to do is we had to cut this tube. We could not pull it out of there. That's because it's probably melted into the uh, heat break. And we had to do a little bit of trimming of the blue stuff to get it to fit. Uh, 3D printing, they're not always accurate. But it was fairly close, so now we just need to get in here and tighten our rail, get all this stuff out of there. And then uh, we need to go and zip tie our wires over to here, put our runout sensor over here. And you're going to want to attach your sensor on the back here. So this is what you're going to see. Uh, I had to kind of tap the screw hole. The one that was printed was fine, but just not close enough. So now we got this, and then we just need to accommodate the rest of this cable here. Hopefully, we won't have any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, pull as much of it as possible from here, and... Uh, Boy, if I'd have known this cable ended right here, I would have just pulled this thing right through the other end. Okay, so anyway, we just got to mess with the cables and then uh, we'll get the bottom of that part tightened up and we'll give it a test print. Okay, so we got this one attached here. And 
Let's see. I'm trying to think if we can do that. Nope, we can't do that. So, because this is going to travel up and down. So, we need to put this someplace else, but um, actually we can have this about like what that one is. Just as long as it can go back and forth. So, we just need to go a little further with it. Yeah. And then the other thing you're going to want to do, this normally sits over here, mounts backwards, and then one of the screws goes right through here, which is this one here. Just flip it around, mount it this way. Now we can feed it directly down into our filament sensor. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Go into our settings. And heat up our print bed and get ready for PLA. And then uh, we'll kind of just watch things here and um, I've got some zip ties and twist ties to kind of mock things up until we figure out where everything needs to be let's get all this stuff here I love this little tool storage so this is looking a lot like the CR10 V3 now or the Kunovo Pyramid A1A or whatever the hell that thing's called so but the difference between this and my pyramid is it doesn't have a, a touch sensor. So I think this one here, I would just probably slice everything from now on um, with the uh, CR10 V3, which is um, direct drive, etc., etc. Because I don't think the touch sensor does any kind of mesh or anything like that, unless 8 bit computer is pretty limited. And then the other thing we got to do, we got to get this thing up so I can adjust the wheel on the bottom. Gotta go back in here. And do we need to move our Z? We're gonna go a little bit higher. We're gonna go up 30? Jeez. I wonder if you can actually enter the number in here. Oh, you can. Let's go 60. And we've got filament coming out now. Okay. So now I should be able to get in there and adjust it. It's just going to be this wheel over there, the eccentric. All right, we got it where it doesn't really move too much. All right, we're going to go in here and we'll do a test. So I'm going to here. Uh, do the ultimate bed level test and um, I just leave these on then it'll do like a nine point check something like that as soon as it determines its bed temperature is correct okay so it looks like it's started we'll see how it does Maybe at least a line there Oh yeah, it's going to print this uh, a, uh, skirt, I don't know why. Yeah, this was sliced up in the uh, Sunlu software. But, it's laying down. It's real thin here, which my Z is a little too close. Um, I don't remember negative or positive, and I'm not going to adjust it while it's going. Um, but yeah, it's the same as it was before. So I went and adjusted it to 229. Um, I think that's the right direction. But at least it's not scraping, we know that. <laughs> At least not yet. So, I think that's probably okay. Um, so I don't know how well this is going to work compared to was before, um, or you know any of that. But I know that now, if I want to print something like TPU, I've got a much better chance of being able to print it. We didn't have to buy any additional parts. Um, we just had to make the one part right here. We're still using the single uh, gear extruder, but it's nice because it's all metal. 
so it really uh, isn't going to break or anything like the Ender 3s. I wish I could get a different little thing for that. But it's pretty good. It's consistent with what it was doing before. Yeah, except for now we're direct drive. So we'll have to see what it looks like when it starts to fill them in. This is also, you know, PLA, so I mean it's like way, way, way easier to print. The um, the Pet G is not as forgiving. Looks like maybe it skipped something there. I'm not sure. Um, I have this same pattern and it slices up completely different in uh, Cura. Yeah, see. Um, it does the same thing, it just does it in like, it seems like in a different order. Like it would have went from here to there, then back over to there or something, you know. It's looking pretty good. Um, looks a little thin in the corner here. Maybe that's just my imagination, but I, I kind of doubt it because um, the print bed dips down more in the middle. Uh, this one I usually, these two would have trouble with. Um, so it looks fine. We do a little dragging of the cable. I gotta be careful because I don't want it to run into there. I think actually this piece could get removed from there. And we just could really rope release the whole thing to here then I got this done so that's it for now